So here we are at the Tank Museum and as you can see right in front of me is Tiger 131. Um, this is an early production um, Tiger, so Panzerkampfwagen uh, 6. Um, so like I said, this is the early production. So in the, uh, the front here, um, on the right, the driver's compartment, on the left, the radio op and gunner, then three crew members in the, the main turret, so you'd have the commander, um, the, the gunner and the loader. Um, as you can see, the uh, famous 88mm um, main armament. In the, uh, the little ball turret at the front here, there would be an MG34 um, 7.92 machine gun and there'd be a second 7.92 machine gun used for anti-aircraft that would be mounted on a bracket on the copula, the commander's copula on the top of the turret there. You can see on this early production that you've got um, three smoke dischargers um, on brackets on either side of the turret. Um, in the mid-production and later productions they removed the, um, the smoke dischargers because they actually prov um, proved more of a hindrance than a help to the, to the crew. Um, they would be, the smoke, dis the smoke grenades would be set off easily by small arms fire and um, shrapnel during battle and that could um, sort of blanket the tank in smoke um, meaning that the crew couldn't actually see what they were doing or where they were going or if there was, the tank was holed down or in some sort of concealed position the smoke discharges firing accidentally would give away the position of the tank um, I'm getting a little bit closer here and you can see the two small holes to the right of the gun mantlet so I can just zoom in a bit there that's for the the bioptical um, gun sight um, and then the the hole on the other side would be where the coaxial machine gun is right. so in terms of the tiger we're talking about um, 100 millimeters uh, main armor 120 millimeters on the the gun mantlet up there and then the side armor would be 80 millimeters um, so come round and uh, can have a quick look at the road wheels here. So on these early production, you've got these rubberized um, road wheels. So what you often see in um, fighting the tigers in Eastern Europe in the, the, in the winter and uh, springtime, they'd often remove this first um, outer road wheel because otherwise you'd get um, frozen mud would clog up and um, damage the torsion bars. So often you'll see photographs of these tanks um, with this front road wheel removed. It's not because they were damaged, it was, to, it was a kind of preventative measure for them. So I would come round and see some of the towing cables and things like that. So um, tiger, well, a Tiger uh, going nearly 60 tonnes um, will be a difficult beast to tow, so the German army would use three prime movers, um, the Falmo um, half-track heavy tractor, to move a broken down tiger. Um, later on you had the uh, Berg Panther and Berg Tiger which were purpose-built recovery vehicles. Um, it was strictly forbidden for one tiger to tow another tiger out of um, danger or out of a, a difficult situation but of course um, in battle conditions um, th these ignore orders would be ignored and uh, one tiger would be used to, um, to pull another one out of harm's way. The problem was um, the second tiger or the recovery tiger would often um, be damaged, the torsion bars and steering could be damaged towing the other tiger to safety. So come round to the back of the tiger here and it's a compartment for various bits of equipment. Again on these early production tigers you've got this air filtration system which was later removed in sort of mid-production and late production uh, tigers. Um, or in terms of the, the road wheels that we just looked at a moment ago, of course in the later production you've got the steel rimmed, which if I just come over to the elephant that's over here, you can see this steel rimmed um, um, wheel configuration which the, the Tiger 1 doesn't have. Um, but they replaced the, um, the, the rubberized road wheels with these, these full steel versions partly um, because it was just more effective and, and, and more practical, but of course as the war went on and raw materials became more difficult for the Germans to source, um, get, getting things like vulcanised rubber was more difficult, so moving to a, um, a, a completely steel road wheel was much more effective. In terms of the, the, the side of the hole here, 
you'll often see pictures of tigers, um, you know, from uh, battles like Operation Citadel um, in Kursk. Um, you'll see tigers with barbed wire all along the sides of the vehicle. Um, this was done um, by the crews and it was to prevent the Soviet troops actually climbing onto the tank and trying to disable it. Uh, the tiger here has got the main track on, obviously for transportation the tigers were normally moved by rail um, and they were put on a, a narrower um, track just for movement by rail, otherwise the tiger would, would, um, um, would extend over the edges of the flatbed trucks with the small gauge railways. So this Tiger, um, Tiger 131, um, probably the most um, famous um, t tank probably in the world, um, it was captured in Tunis in 1943. Uh, the Tiger went actually into um, service at the end of 1942 um, in the Soviet Union. Um, didn't have a great start, but for the, uh, the whole of 1943, the Tiger was really the um, premium uh, battlefield tank. Um, uh, from 1943 um, sort of into 44 and 45, um, even though the Tiger has this um, this aura of invincibility about it, um, it actually lost a lot of that um, um, a lot of its advantages. And one of the things about the Tiger that people sort of um, assume is that it was because it, it was a big sort of 60 ton heavy tank, it wasn't very fast or manoeuvrable. But in fact, it could do about um, 30 kilometres over good ground. Um, and was fairly manoeuvrable. Um, after action reports, if you buy um, Thomas Anderson's book on the Tiger, you can read after action reports where they, the, the crews are very happy with the Tiger in terms of its manoeuvrability. Um, so it, it was, a, it was a, a fairly good balance of um, speed, armour and um, firepower. Uh, some more information about the Tiger here. So, um, in terms of um, armament, the main armament here is the 88mm gun. So, like we were saying, um, it's an excellent standoff weapon. So, being able to stand off at around 3,000 yards and take on Allied tanks. Um, the tank actually carried around 92 88mm um, rounds. That would be a mixture of armour piercing and high explosive. Um, other things about the, um, the Tiger I. Um, in terms of um, engine, it was a, a Maybach engine and it was the uh, HL 210 Maybach engine originally and then um, the slightly improved Maybach uh, 230, I believe, engine producing about, two, uh, about 700 horsepower. Um, it was a, a petrol rather than a diesel engine and this particular tank, Tiger 131, has actually got the um, the Maybach engine from the uh, from the Tiger II. Something else interesting about the um, the Tiger I um, was uh, it really required um, a well-trained and experienced crew to make it um, a really really effective weapon system. Um, uh, the, the Tiger had some um, little uh, idiosyncrasies, such as in battle reversing. Um, you need to reverse the tank back in a straight line. If you reverse back and try to steer, invariably the Tiger One would throw a track and that could get the, the tank destroyed and you as a crewman killed. So, but to, to, to know that and remember that, have the discipline to, to reverse back, stop, and then adjust and steer, and then reverse back again in the heat of battle is something that um, required that kind of experience, training and discipline.